Today in Campers Crusades for our music lesson with Miss Emily, we will be learning how to make instruments so that in our next lesson, we have something to use to practice reading rhythms. The first instrument is going to be the easiest instrument with the least amount of supplies. So, maracas. Now, I have made my maraca out of an old gum container. This uh, used to be full of trident, but now it's full of dried, dried black eyed peas. If you don't have a empty gum container, you can use a jar, uh, you can use a can or a jar with no lid because you can just put fabric over it but I will say having a actual secure screwing lid will work probably best because after I put my black eyed peas in here I dropped it and then I had to pick up like 75 black eyed peas from my hardwood floors so if you don't want to have to worry about a possible mess from then you probably want to find a jar that has a screwy lid. Now, inside your jar for your maraca, you can use really anything that is small and is hard. So, a uh, dry rice will work, any kind of dry bean. Uh, like I said, I'm using black eyed peas. It's just you want to be able to get that bouncy, resonating sound. You can also probably try marbles, but you probably don't want a whole bunch of them because they'll hit each other. And yeah, so in our next lesson, I will be showing you guys how to interpret rhythms and read rhythms. So you can just shake along. So yeah. Um, next, we're going to learn how to make a banjo. The first and major tool supply you will need is a small box or a bowl that is empty <clears throat> you will also need rubber bands i will will be using three but you can use up to five it's just that you want there to be enough space on your box or bowl that you can pluck it and then if you are using a box, you will want to cut off these tabs so that you just have five sides. So one, two, three, four, and the bottom, five. So, <clears throat> here we go, cutting. If you have any problems cutting, you can ask your parent for help because cutting cardboard is actually pretty hard especially if you don't have the right scissors and then there is an optional material it is a paper towel roll holder thing which you can tape to the top of the box afterwards However, I do not have any of those at the moment, and I don't think the toilet paper holder roll thing will really give it what it wants. It's not for the sound, it is just for the aesthetics, so the way it looks, to make it look more like a banjo. So now that you've cut off the sides of your boxes, and now that you have five sides, one, two, three, four, five, we are going to put the rubber bands on. You want to make sure that your rubber bands are big enough to go around the box without breaking. So, let's try. This is probably going to snap me. Oh, it worked. So we have one box, I mean string. 
Now let's do the other ones. And like I said, you probably don't want any less than two and you probably don't want any more than five so that you have enough room on your instrument to pluck it. And the only reason why I'm cringing is because I'm pretty sure that these rubber bands are too small. Yeah, this one's not going on. Hopefully this one does. two on here I just did not want to get snapped on camera but yeah so you can tape the paper towel rack holder thing to the top of your box right here so that you have something to hold but I mean just holding it like this is totally fine and it works um, you can just go with the rhythm and notice how like touching it stops the sound so that's because the vibration is causing those sounds. So yeah, there you have it. Banjo, and you can also do it with a bowl, but I think that the box works best just because of the way it echoes. Um, and your box can be smaller than this. I don't recommend going any much bigger because the chances of you finding rubber bands that fit will be less. But it's still really fun to play with with just two. Next, we will be making a drum out of a bowl, some saran wrap, and another rubber band. Now, I have gone and just collected a small little Tupperware container because. Uh, I think plastic bowls would work best, but I really don't have any plastic bowls in my house. I only have like the glass ones or the metal ones for mixing bowls. Those might work too, but I'm going to try and see if this small little rubber made container will work. First things first, you are going to want to get your cling wrap, saran wrap, plastic wrap, and cut a small piece that will fit around your container that you're using. So measure, it's fine. I'm going to cut, cut, cut with the box. Um, you might want to ask your parents for help cutting the saran wrap because even I, an adult, have problems getting this right. <laughs> it's very tricky because it sticks all together. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now that we have our saran wrap, we are going to put it on top of our bowl. I can't do it in the frame, so I can use my, here we go. Um, try and make sure it is all unattached from itself, so it's all nice and big. There we go, like that. Yeah. And then stretch it over and wrap it around. And then take another rubber band, different from your banjo rubber band. And put it around the top like this. And pull it tight. Another word for tight is taut. So you will pull this taut. Like so. And 
Then you can rip off the extra saran wrap or you, if you want, or you can cut it off. Do you hear that? I don't know if you can hear it kind of echoing, um, but there is a little bit of the echo for the drum. I think that maybe if you use a bigger bowl, you will be able to hear the drum better. Um, but yeah, now you know how to make a drum. Out of saran wrap. You can also use um, parchment paper or wax paper. I just don't have any, so cling wrap it was. Now, does anyone know what family of instruments our maraca belongs to? It is the percussion family. So these sounds are usually made at the back of an orchestra by a percussionist who is using a maraca or any of those funny um, noise making things. I don't know what they're called, but yeah, they use maracas to make little sounds behind everyone and percussions actually percussionists actually uh, have a very important job they as well as the conductor are in charge of making sure everyone is at the same pace while playing their instrument so imagine you are playing an instrument at the front of the stage and you see the conductor with his little thingy I don't know how to actually professionally conduct, but we're going to pretend I'm doing it right. And every time he goes down, it's a beat that you need to be in sync with. So every corner he touches, you need to make sure that whatever you're playing is hitting it. And percussionists, they watch that and they stay on beat. And so if you are a musicianist and musicianist, musician, you can watch the conductor and you can listen back for the percussion because if the percussion is not in sync then no one can be in sync the next instrument the banjo or guitar does anyone know what family instruments that the banjo belongs to hint belongs to the string instruments. The string instruments in a orchestra, symphony kind of uh, scenario, you're not really going to be finding guitars and banjos. Um, you will find the string instruments that use a bow, so a violin, a viola, a cello, a bass. You will also probably find a piano. Another rare string instrument you will find is a harp, but like I said, those are pretty rare. I've never seen one, so main string instruments in a band, common band, will be the ones with the bow and probably piano. The last instrument we made was a drum. So, what family do you guys think that the drum belongs in? Right. It belongs with the maraca in the percussion section. So, a drum is just like the maraca in the way that it is used by musicians to listen to, to make sure that they're still on beat. I don't know if any of you guys have older siblings, 
but if you have an older sibling and they play football, um, high schoolers, uh, the high school teams will have most likely a marching band. And you will see the marching band has all their instruments on the field, but they have their percussionists in the front of the field, except for their drums. Their drums are on the field because the drums are a very important aspect for the musicians on the field. And it's how they keep in touch with the band directors and the drum majors when they can't see them. So I don't know if you've seen a marching show before, but there are times when you're not always facing or looking at the conductor. So you're left listening to each other and listening to the percussionists in the front and listening to the drums. Another thing that you can do if you are on a marching band team is if you can't hear anything, like if you're in a setting where the sounds are bouncing off of each other, then what you can do is you're supposed to watch the drum, the drum line's feet because the drum line's feet, that is like kind of the bottom of the building block. So you have the, the, the drum major is always going to be conducting a tempo, but there, there will be times when the band is not in sync with the drum major. So if you find yourself lost on a marching band field, all you have to do is look at the drum line's feet because everyone is listening to the drum line, but not everyone is watching the drum major. I hope you guys had fun making these instruments and I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you next week.